You guessed it, we're in the garden, planting seeds. Hello, and welcome to our garden. I'm Angela Todd, this is my amazing husband Charles. Welcome to the Abundant Life Garden segment. And yes, we're digging in the dirt. Why are we digging in the dirt? Well, today we're talking about sowing and reaping. And the great thing about that is that it's two part. When you sow, you're gonna reap something. Yeah. So when you think about the Bible, anytime they're talking about sowing and reaping, it's referring to, back then it was like agriculture. You know, they planted, they had crops. So you might say, well, yeah, that's back then, but this is today. Well, sowing and reaping, it's still relevant today. Just like they planted their crops, they had their herds, they had all those things that they had. Today, you have a job, you have a business. Right. So it's the same principle. So we're gonna show you all about sowing and reaping. Which is seed time and my favorite, harvest. harvest. <laughs> <laughs> and you should always expect a harvest and we're gonna get into the scripture here as we go and you're gonna see that God wants you to have a harvest when you sow seed. Amen. So if we're gonna plant this seed today, what do you got kind of seed you got there? I got me some grapefruit seed because I want grapefruit growing in my backyard. If a farmer puts seed into the ground, he's gonna expect to get that harvest up, right? Exactly. So once he planted that seed, if something didn't happen in a couple days, would he come back and dig it up? No way. No, he's gonna keep it going and he's right. gonna expect the rain to come and all the other principles that are gonna help that to grow. So likewise, you've gotta do the same. Once you put your seed in the ground, once you sow your money, you gotta expect that there's gonna be a harvest. And if something doesn't happen the next day, if it doesn't happen the next week, you can't go back and dig up your seed. You say, well, how would you dig up your seed? Remember we talked about our one teaching with words, how yes. you can get to your desired destination or it can also take you to a place you don't wanna go. So you have to watch your words. You don't wanna say, well, I tithe, nothing's happened today. I tithe a month ago and nothing still happened. Your, your harvest is gonna to come to you. Woo, that was some hard work planting seed. Oh, come on now. Well, the good part about it is, is that God gives you the seed, which reminds me of Genesis 129. Right. You wanna read it for him? I do. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. The great thing that I get out of that is that God gives you the seed. He is the one that gives you your seed. Right. Out of his goodness, he's gonna provide what you need in order to plant to get your harvest. If he gave the farmers those seed, he's gonna do the same thing to us today. So say, well, I don't have seed. I'm not planting crops. I'm not planting gardens. I need some money. Right. And it's like, well, okay, you get a paycheck, right? Right. If you're a business owner, then you have revenue coming in through your business. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people think of that money that's coming in, they're gonna take that and they're gonna pay their bills. Mm -hmm. Or they have the revenue coming in and they're gonna pay their employees and they're gonna pay all their overhead and all the things associated if you're a business owner. Well, the first thing that you need to think about in that paycheck or that revenue to your business is that there's seed in there. Right. So if you take and you spend all that money and you don't plan anything, then you didn't sow anything. Basically eat your own seed. You eat your own seed. So it'd be the same principle. Think if a farmer had a harvest and he took all of his seed, all of his harvest, and he either traded it, ate it, or whatever, mm -hmm. and he had nothing left over, he wouldn't have anything to plant for the next year for the harvest. Right. So guess what? He's done. Right. He's out of business. Right. So they would always put something aside in their storehouses and think what Deuteronomy 28 says, is that he's gonna increase your storehouses. He's going to bless mm. your storehouses. Amen. So you have to think in terms of a farmer did. So when you get that paycheck, look at it. First thing you need to think about, I've got seed here. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do with that seed? Am I going to eat it all or am I going to plant it back into the kingdom of God? Am I going to give to my church? Am I going to give to ministries? Am I going to do what the word of God says so that I can get a multiplier out of my seed? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think people look at their paycheck as that that's their income or the business revenue from their businesses. That's my income, that's not, that's just part. That's just part of your revenue because when you take that seed out and then you then give it, you then give your money into ministry, you give your money to your church or whatever, now you're expanding what you're able to receive because of the harvest. So you're not limited to that paycheck. I know there's a lot of people sometimes, you know, they're living paycheck to paycheck and they're just thinking, 
how am I gonna get out of this? I've been in this cycle for so long. I get paid and it's all gone. I have money coming from my business, I pay all my expenses, and then it's all gone. It's like this cycle. Well, you're stuck in that cycle because you're eating all your seed. Mm -hmm. But if you will take a portion out of that and then sow it into it, then God can put a multiplier on that so that you can come above your what you're getting paid. You can come above what the revenue is on your business. And that's the whole thing about seed time and harvest that sometimes I think that people don't get. And that's one of the most important things I think that I want to share with you guys is don't just look at it as a paycheck, as money. Look at it as you got seed. But I love that your seed is just that. It's your opportunity to plant, to grow, and to get a better harvest. Because when you plant one seed, you don't just get one fruit, you get one fruit that produces much more seed. Amen. Right? You can't see it over here, I don't think. Well, maybe you can. But we have a peach tree over here. So we just went through the harvest with this peach tree. We had so many peaches. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, it's nuts it was almost. Like, yeah, it was crazy. Like So for like two weeks, it's like it's a really <laughs> short harvest. And it's like, they all come at once. There's hundreds of them. It's like every two days we literally have hundreds of peaches. We are giving and, peaches away to everybody. <laughs> yeah, we're giving peaches to our neighbors. We're giving peaches. You're taking them to your friends at your gym. We're giving them yeah. to like our de car detail guy. Everybody that we have contact with, we're giving peaches. I mean, we have an abundance of harvest of peaches. Right. And it's the same way in your finances. That's where God wants to get you. He wants to get you a place when you're sowing, you're sowing, you're sowing, that it's not just about just getting an increase for you and your family, right. but it's about so you can be a blessing, so that you can put money into your church, you can put money into ministries, you can put money into people. I mean, that's been the great thing about us when we prosper is that being able to help out people. Right. I know? love that analogy with the peach tree because it wasn't just us consuming all the peaches. We had so many, we were forced to give them away because they were We tried. Not. We try, yeah. we're having peaches on our fish, peaches in our cereal, peaches in our salad, <laughs> peach salad. jam. We're like, how many other ways can we have peaches? It's like, we just can't do yeah, it on smoothies. your own. smoothies. And when you continue to do that, when you continue to do what the Word of God says, then you will get that way in your finances as well, too. You'll start to get to a place where it's like, you have so much, just like what Malachi talks about, that you won't have enough room to keep it all. You won't have enough room to receive. Right, I love that. Which also reminds me of another scripture, 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. Will you read that? It is God who gives seed to the man to plant. He also gives the bread to eat. Then we know he will give you more seed to plant and make it grow so you will have more to give it away. And that's what we just talked about, right? The seed. Right, that's why I want to bring it up because it ties it all together with the word. It's just not our opinion. It's the word of God. Right, God provides seed to the sower. So think about that. God has empowered you to be able to prosper by giving you seed. It's like he sets you up from the very beginning. That's how good he is. It's not like you have to go out and do something, and then once you do something, then he's going to get involved. He gets involved right from the very beginning with you. Oh, that's good. I like that. And right after the flood, God cut a covenant with Noah, and this is what he said. Genesis 8:22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. So let me ask you a question. Is it day? It is day. Was it night last night? It was night last night. Was it cool this morning we walked on the beach? It was cool this morning we walked on the beach. Is it warm right now? It's warm right now. <laughs> okay, so what does it say? Wow! S seed time and harvest will not fail. It means it's not, it won't stop. Right. It's still an act. As long as you can wake up every day to the sun, you can go to bed, it's dark, you know, hot and cold, that means that this is going to work. Seed time and harvest every is going to work as long as this is still in effect. That's good. So just like we were talking earlier when we were planting the seed over there, if a farmer plants a seed, it'd be unnatural for him not to get a harvest for that to not produce. So in, in the same way, it'd be unnatural for you if you give your money into the kingdom of God, it's gonna work. It's gonna work just like this says it is. And you can't defy God's laws. You can't defy the law of seed time and harvest. It just doesn't happen, yeah. So you should expect, based on that word, that you're going to get a harvest when you plant seed, when you give your money, you should expect it. Read what it says in Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11, 24 through 25. There is one who scatters, yet increases more, and there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich. I like that. It's good. It's I, good. My, I have a generous soul Amen. in Jesus' name. My Amen. soul is generous. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a good declaration. That's one of my new ones. <laughs> my soul is generous. <laughs> so let me just go back here and just kind of break this down a little bit more. There is one who scatters, yet increases more and more. So you're thinking if, if you're just giving your money, 
all over the place. In the natural perspective, people think, you're giving your money all, all over, you're giving it to this church, you're giving it to this ministry, you're giving it to that ministry, you're giving these people, they're gonna think, you're gonna decrease in your money. But this is not what this says. There's one who scatters, yet increases more. So for us personally, I mean, we're giving every single month anywhere from five to 10 different ministries. And whoever ministers to us, whoever we Correct. feel led that's sowing into our life, we have been positioned to sow into them. And we would encourage you to do the same thing. Yeah, and individuals, I mean, we're helping out individuals as well, too. So mm -hmm. some people may look at us that don't believe this or who, you know, aren't even Christians and they'll think, these guys are nuts. They're giving their money all over the place. But, <laughs> a lot of people would say that, too. But we're, we're scattering, yet we're increasing more and more. It's true. And then here's the other part of this, then, is that there's one who withholds more than is right, but leads to poverty. Ooh. So you might be thinking, well, I really don't have that much. I need to hold on to it. I need to, I need to... You know, keep this money to pay my bills. I need to, I need to, I need to, I need to, I, 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 I. It becomes <laughs> I focused. Right. You know, you're focused on yourself. You're focused on yourself. And what you want to do is you want to get your attention off yourself. You want to get your attention onto Jesus and you want to get your attention onto the word because that's how you're going to increase. Right. And I love, I think it was um, George Pearson who said one time, he said, if God can get money through you, he'll get money to you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's like an open vessel, right? It's like a a valve right there's like different valves of grace that open up but if you choke that valve there's nothing that can flow to it so if you're choking like like when you choke the seed right you're choking that valve you, there's no, nothing can get through to it but if you position yourself to open up to receive you can then give you know what you're saying yeah part of one of my declarations is that, thank you lord that i'm your distribution center that's good. you know what a distribution center is i mean we've got distribution centers right here in Southern California because we have the port in Long Beach. Right. So you have all this product that comes in through the port and then goes to a distribution center, one place, and then it goes out to multiple places. Right. So it's the same thing. God's getting something into you, he's getting money in you, and then you can get it out to multiple places, right. multiple people. And expect a harvest, Ex absolutely expect a harvest. And Amen. it doesn't come from people. Once you get your mind on the Lord, the Lord will then produce a harvest in other ways and there's like 21 supernatural ways that the lord could get money to you that's which, a whole nother teaching that's a whole other teaching backed up by 191 scriptures yes by the way. that we can share at a later time <laughs> right? and a lot of times people just get focused on their job they think that's the only way it's their source no. but there is multiple ways that god can get money to you yes. if you get your attention onto him and get your attention off of yourself yes and amen